Welcome to this presentation on Python mocking. In this video, we will explore unit testing with the unitist.mock library. Let's dive in and discover how to effectively use mocking in Python. Let's understand what mocking really is. Mocking is a technique used in unit testing where you replace real objects with mock objects that simulate their behavior. These mock objects mimic the behavior of real objects in controlled ways, allowing you to test code in isolation. Now let's see why use mocking. First, it isolates code for true unit testing. Second, it helps to test code that depends on external services. Third, it helps to simulate edge cases and error conditions. And finally, it speeds up tests by avoiding slow operations. Let's explore the unitist.mock library in Python. Python's unitist.mock is a library for testing in Python that allows you to replace parts of your system under test with mock objects. It provides two main tools, magicmock, a full-featured mock object with pre-configured methods and patch, which is used to temporarily replace objects during testing. To import the library, you can use from unitist import mock or from unitist.mock import mock magic mock patch. In Python 3.3 and above, you can also use import unitist.mock as mock. Let's create your first mock object. To do so, first import mock from unitist.mock. Now create a mock object by instantiating mock class. To configure a return value, Set the dot return underscore value attribute of the mock object. When you call the mock object, it will return the configured return value. Similarly, to configure a method on the mock, set the dot return underscore value attribute of the method. When you call the method, it will return the configured value. Let's explore magic mock objects. Magic mock is a subclass of mock with default implementations of magic methods. It has pre-configured magic methods like double underscore string, double underscore represent, and so on. It auto-creates attributes and methods on demand. It records all calls and arguments. And it is great for mocking complex objects. To create a magic mock, first import magic mock from unitist.mock. Then instantiate magic mock class. Now, configure method return values using the dot return underscore value attribute. Finally, use the configured mock in your tests. Let's explore the patch decorator to temporarily replace objects during testing. To use patch as a decorator, first import unitist, patch from unitist.mock and the module containing the code to test. Then create a class that inherits from unitist.testCase. Use the patch decorator to specify the object to be mocked. Configure the mock object and set the return value. Call the function that uses the external function. Assert that the mock was called and assert that the result is as expected. Let's explore how to use patch as a context manager to limit mock scope to a code block. To use patch as a context manager, first import unitist and patch from unitist.mock. Also, import the requests library and the module containing the function to be tested. Then define a test class inheriting from unitist.testCase. Use the with statement along with patch as a context manager. Configure the mock response, setting the status code and return value. Call the function that uses the mocked object within the context. Finally, add assertions to check if the mock was called with the expected arguments and assert the result. Let's explore mock assertions. Here are some common assertions. Assert underscore called checks if the mock was called. Assert underscore called underscore once checks if the mock was called exactly once. Assert underscore called underscore with checks if the mock was called with specific arguments. Assert underscore called underscore once underscore with checks if the mock was called once with specific arguments. Assert underscore any underscore call checks if the mock was called with these arguments and assert underscore not underscore call checks if the mock was never called. For example, to use these assertions, first create a mock function. Call the mock with different arguments. Then use the assertions to check the call behavior. You can also access call information such as call count and call arguments list. 
Let's see how to use side underscore effect beyond simple return values. Side underscore effect gives you more control over mock behavior. It can raise exceptions, return different values on consecutive calls, and execute a function when mock is called. This provides more dynamic behavior than return underscore value. For example, you can use side underscore effect to mock that raises a value error exception. You can also use it to return multiple return values in sequence. Additionally, you can define a function as a side effect to provide dynamic responses based on the input. Let's discuss some best practices for Python mocking. Do mock at the right level, closest to the external dependency. Do use patch where imported, not where defined. Do write clear assertions about how mocks were used, and use spec to ensure the mock interface matches the real object. On the other hand, don't mock everything as some things are better integrated. Don't overuse mocking as it can make tests brittle. Don't test implementation details, focus on behavior. And avoid mocking the system under test itself. If you like this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Visit codelucky.com for more such useful content.